Hello everyone, this video will be criticizing the different parts of the circuit game mode and has some fixes for them. My ideas are general improvements and then also how to actually make the circuit a really fun roguelike. I can't find anywhere where DE specifically states in the Duviri patch notes that it is a roguelike, but Duviri and the circuit are clearly inspired by the massively popular gaming genre. The point of roguelikes is to be endlessly playable and have different runs all the time, and the circuit does not feel like a different experience every time you go through it. Most runs just end in an AoE status nuke, regardless of what Warframe and weapon you start with. So let's get right into it. First of all, everything in this video is just my opinion. So if you hear anything you don't like, I will kindly have to ask you to not watch the whole video and just go to the comment section and tell me how stupid I am. But make sure to leave the video playing so I get all that sweet, sweet watch time. My first and biggest recommendation is to make the game modes harder so they're actually possible to lose. Right now, defense is the only one that gets me perspiring a little while the other game mode's difficulty is just with the urge to fall asleep. On excavation, I'm pretty sure you can just spawn in infinite excavators so it really doesn't matter if you can defend them or not. So they should really set a limit to the max amount of excavators. So make it so they can spawn only about six throughout the whole thing. And if you don't get the 300 cryotic by then, then the mission fails. Void Flood is kind of a hard one to make difficult because it's just a glorified Easter egg hunt. I don't know how you make an Easter egg hunt difficult besides just setting a time limit like there already is with the Zaraman Void Flood mission. I think they should just combine the remaining two game modes, Survival and Exterminate. Survival is boring, and Exterminate is literally just easier than Survival, because there's no time pressure at all. If you combine them to where you have to kill a certain number of enemies in a certain amount of time, that would put a little pep in people's step. Then they can make it even cooler and more difficult by adding in stage hazards, such as the Aura Worm Pillars just, that just come out of the ground, or other things that fly around and hit you, or the magnetic disruptions that you see in like corpus missions. And then since they're combining those two game modes, they can put in disruption. It'd be really fun to kill demolists that are from the Dax faction, if that's what you want to call it, or just a giant hulking Thrax it would be so cool to kill. Then lastly, I think defense is actually the best game mode and it's because it's actually something you have to pay attention to. And I don't mind that the objective can be one shot when the enemies get into the thousands. That's just the increase in difficulty and you just have to play that much more perfect. Now I know some of you already pulled your hands out of your Doritos bag and are about to type me a comment going, But Doth, I'm already so tired of that big nasty thwax coming over and pounding my poor little defense objective. I need my rewards. My rewards, Doth. Well stop. I'm on your side. I think if you lose the mission, you shouldn't lose any rewards. A lot of the fun in roguelikes is using all the RNG tools that you've been given on your run to just barely pull a win out of your ass. Right now, there's no incentive to try and go the distance and go into that third or fourth defense mission because you'll waste an hour plus of your work if you lose. You should be able to go into that defense mission with the motivation of getting more rewards and not having to bitch out because DE doesn't respect your time. Rewards should just save on the leave or stay screen just like they do when you get a decree in the open world game mode. One of my other big ones is being able to mod your Warframe and load out in the cave, which I feel like everyone wants. The amount of loading we have to go through is ridiculous. If you want to use an incarnate weapon in the circuit, but don't have it modded properly, you have to go to your orbiter, load into that. Then, if you don't have the right evolutions, you have to load into the Zaraman, because we still can't change our evolutions in the arsenal. Then you have to load back into your orbiter, and then load back into the cave. God help you if you don't have good loading times. So then if they do make modding possible in the cave, the next thing I would want is being able to mod the random weapons that they give you that you don't own. This is so if we've never used the weapon, we can test it out, maybe like it, maybe get it for ourselves or buy it. Then also we could just try out different builds on guns that we've used a lot for a run or just do a funny meme run. In my perfect world, you would still be using the mods that you own. So you still have to like level them up and everything, but the mod capacity cost would be the same as if you were putting the mod into a formid slot. So we'd still be able to make full builds, but we wouldn't have to form the weapon that we're trying out. And we should be able to make builds because the default mod configurations are an absolute joke. The philosophy, it seems, around these default mods are bigger is better. If a weapon has a good stat, just pump that. You better believe if the main IPS on a weapon is puncture, you're going to be having two puncture mods on that boy. Elemental damage? The fuck is that? A Felarx that can empty its clip in less than a second, but takes four seconds to reload? Optimal. This Synapse has elemental damage? Finally. 
but it's corrosive, which it innately already has. At least they put a damage multiplier on it, right? Almost every single default configuration is barely usable or useless for Steel Path. Also, what is this going to teach new players? Oh yeah, finally, I got my first Ayatin Tweza. It only took 32 twice. I can't wait to wevel that Sundering Strike mod that's on all those default builds. It must be really powerful. So this next idea wasn't mine, it was Devin Ryder's. I'll put his channel in the pinned comments. He doesn't really upload too much anymore, but he does have really good trade chat videos. So I do honestly feel stupid for not thinking about this. It never even crossed my mind, but enemies in the circuit don't drop resources. Playing the circuit for fun is basically a waste of time in terms of getting loot, and people are gonna pick other things over this game mode because of that. Why is my loot page empty after an hour long mission? That is just sad. Enemies need to drop loot like credits, mods, and endo, and then some set of building materials. My suggestion would be ones from the void since we're fighting corrupted. And I think it's always nice when a new update comes out that it creates a new best way to farm something. A better outlet to get Argon Crystals would be amazing for every player in the game. Newer players won't have to play hide and seek for them in the void to build things that they need in their foundries and vets can use the Argon Crystals for Bile in the Helmet system. So my last idea goes back to improving the roguelike concept of the circuit. There needs to be many, many more decrees with much more creative ideas. You shouldn't be able to end up with the exact same power-ups every time you go on a run in a roguelike. And there's so few decrees right now that you can basically count on getting certain ones if you need them for a build. Also, many of the decrees right now are just really boring and I feel like that's because they need to work with the Drifter. They can keep doing that for some of them if they decide to create new ones, but the circuit would end up better if they just start making decrees for frames, and they only appear on the circuit and not the Devere experience. So I do have some decree ideas to at least show examples of what I think would be good, but DE should just look at the other popular roguelikes that exist and then put their coolest power-up ideas into Warframe. My first one is every time you hit an enemy with a bullet, it'll pull other enemies closer to that enemy within 10 meters or something. This would work like Magus Anomaly, but with every bullet, it could just pull in like 0.1 or 0.2 meters of suction. And this is because of multi-shot. If you went, didn't factor in multi-shot, maybe like 0.5 meters. And this would be really good for single target weapons. Maybe you could have it to where it also works when you shoot the ground. So you can shoot the ground and it'll pull Thrax away from the defense objective. Any kind of interesting base stat boost, like increased projectile speed, decreased bullet spread. So if you had those two in a shotgun, it would become a sniper basically. Increase Warframe ability range, please. That'd be so cool. There's so few things that increase range. My next decree would be maggots spawn from your body on every kill. And this would distract Thrax just like a Nidus ultimate does. Enemies that melee you turn to stone. This would be great for Zephyr, or just really anyone for some survivability. And it could probably work against Overguard for Thrax. And I just thought of this, but I do know that this is a actual item from Binding of Isaac. And this is what I mean by DE just copying other games. If they just saw, they just looked at Binding of Isaac items, they would see that. Works perfect. If they put resources in, just give us a 20% resource booster decree. Also, just look at other Warframe abilities and then have them just apply on decrees. Maybe when you cast an ability, just a Volt Shield plops down for 10 seconds. Just anything like that. There's just so many ideas and things you can do that would just make this way more interesting. And for my last decree, it would be a multiplicative buff on Warframe butt size. <laughs> Someone told me not to turn into Pupsker literally on my last video. I'm so sorry I failed you. That's going to be all the ideas I have for now. I actually really enjoy my time on the circuit so far, but I feel like it's going to get stale really fast, especially with grinding it every week. And since this is supposed to be a roguelike, the replayability is supposed to be insane. And it's certainly not there yet. So I really hope they plan on improving it and adding stuff to it because it could be a ton of fun. And I'm 100% sure of that. So thanks for watching. If you have any other ideas or think my ideas are stupid, let me know in the comments. Leave a like if you liked it, dislike if you hated all my ideas, and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. See you later.